Hey, this is Matt Whitmer from Ready Precision. In this video, we are continuing our series on Niagara Basics. And uh, the most basic element of Niagara is what's known as a point. We've gone through a whole bunch of different objects that come pre-set up and configured for you within a station that make that station work, how to create a station, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but once we get into that station and we want to configure and program the station to do specific things for our needs, we need to know what a point is and how it operates in order to make all of that happen. Sort of the basic building block. A point could be a status of a piece of equipment. It could be a temperature. It could be a tag that uh, describes what a piece of equipment serves. Uh, it could be coming from a LAN network, a backend IP network, a backend MSTP network. They all get normalized into points in Niagara so that they can all interoperate and work together uh, seamlessly. So let's jump into Niagara now. We're going to look at some wire sheets and pull up some points and show you the various aspects of the points so that you know what you need to know in order to make use of them in your stations. So let's get started. All right, so I've got our demo station up. We've been working on this demo station for this entire series. And the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on my, um, excuse me, on my config and I'm going to create a new folder and I'm just going to call this playground. And this is where we're sort of going to be messing around and adding things in and deleting things. And uh, one thing that I'll say before we even jump in here is if you're trying to learn Niagara or most technology related things, um, you got to just jump in and mess around with it and click things and move things around. And obviously don't do this on a live station that's controlling a large building or something like that. But if you've got a demo station running on your local machine, uh, you can't really break it because there's nothing to break. Uh, worst case, you got to create a new station and start over. Uh, but you're not doing it for a project or anything, so not a big deal. So get in there, play, mess around, and that's sort of what we're gonna do uh, here in this video. So I will jump into my playground, and you can see we get this wire sheet. It's blank, there's nothing on it. The wire sheet is where we bring out points and objects and interconnect them and make them do things with their relationships or connections to one another. So in this case, I just want to create a point. So if I right click, go to new, and then at the very bottom, we have our four main point types. These are the very, very basic point types. Uh, we've got a Boolean writable, we've got a numeric writable, an enum writable, and a string writable. So the first portion of that is the type of point it is. So we've got a Boolean that's on off. Numeric is a number of some kind, set point, temperature, you name it. Uh, enum is going to be an enumerated uh, value, which means that it is a basically a, a mode you could think of it as. So like it's a string of text that is associated with a specific value. So uh, mode is probably the best example of that or say occupancy uh, a lot of cases because you normally won't just have an unoccupied and occupied. You might have a standby. Uh, you might have some other modes as well. And then we've got a string writable. This is that uh, thing where you have a string of text that maybe you want to be able to modify or change. Uh, it could be a area served for a piece of equipment that you then display on your graphics uh, for that piece of equipment. So in this case, we're just going to pull in a Boolean writable, and I'm going to just leave it as the base name of Boolean writable. We can set that to be, be whatever we want, but for now, uh, we'll just leave it as this. So when we pull it out, we see a couple things. Uh, first, we'll see that what the name is and what the kind of point it is. So that top um, value is the name and the second is the type that it is. So this is a Boolean writable. And then we've got a little icon that also sort of uh, shows that type for us as well. And then we have these things uh, here in the middle that are known as slots. These are values that allow us to do more complicated things with our point. So as you can see, we've got an out. This is what the value is that would be carried on to another point in our wire sheet. And we'll, I'll show you what that looks like here in a moment. And then we also have multiple input slots so that you can create sort of a priority array um, say if this, uh, if a point was connected to in 10, 
and it had a value, it would take precedence over whatever's at in 16. No matter what that value is, there's a value at in 10, it wins over what's at in 16. Now, this is just a small subset of the number of slots that there are on this point. If I double click and pull up the point view or the property sheet for the point, we can see there are a whole bunch of slots that are on this point. We've got our out, and then we've got 16 ins, as well as a fallback value when we don't have any in set at all. We roll back to the fallback. Then we also have some additional uh, modifiable properties that are related to the actions that are on this point. So if I right click on the point just by going to the top when I'm in this property sheet view and go to actions, we can see all of the different actions that are on this point, which uh, um, allow us to make changes or override the point um, from its basic input or in values. So in this case, if I was to do an uh, override to active mode, you can see I'll get a pop-up that'll ask me how long I want to do this for. I'll just do permanent for now. And you can see that when I do that, it will come in at in eight. Okay, and you can see there's there's no way that I can write to innate because of that because it's uh, reserved specifically for that action. If I right click again and go back to auto, that'll reset and clear itself out so that uh, priorities lower than it can take precedence. If I right click again and use one of these emergency values or emergency actions, that's going to come in at in one. There's no way to be above that in the uh, priority. So uh, keep that in mind. What you will find is that a lot of times uh, on a job, you don't want anyone to actually be able to use the emergency uh, uh, actions because they can cause issues. Obviously, you can override into them and then take precedence over any other kind of logic that's in the system. You may want that, you may not. Uh, but that these actions are configurable as to what's seen by going into our, we change from our property sheet here to our slot sheet. And this shows us exactly what all the slots are on our point, and we can change them as we need. So uh, we've got all of our in slots. You'll never really make any changes to your in slots here on the slot sheet. Where you will be doing changes is down, down towards the bottom where the actions show up on the slot sheet. And we can see that we've got our emergency actions on here. If I select all of them, do a right click and do a config flags, I can make these actions hidden so that they don't show up at all. And you'll see this a lot out on job sites where these emergency uh, actions are just plain hidden. So now if I go back to my uh, property sheet and right click do action, now they're not visible at all. They're still there. That in one is still there. Um, if you have a savvy uh, user with the right permissions, they can still get to those actions. But for the normal lame user, uh, they're not going to be available and uh, easily accessible to use. So that is generally what we're looking at here for the uh, point itself, what's available to us to change and modify. One additional piece I guess I should mention on the slot sheet is if you go into one of your slots, uh, say my active, say I want to uh, change this because active inactive as names for actions is not very descriptive. Um, I want to change that name. If I just double click, it will give me the ability to change the display name. So we'll just say um, override active for that. And then for inactive, I'll do override inactive. And this could be uh, override enable, override disable, depending on what the point is being used for. Those options uh, are available for you because you can set it to be whatever you want. So if I go back to the property sheet now and do right click actions, you'll see that those values that I had set previously um, come up on that actions view as well. And they come up everywhere that you could potentially be using that point. So uh, I can access the point from the nav tree here on the left hand side. If I right click do actions here, we see that same thing come across. It's being pulled from the display names that are set on the actions themselves. So if I jump back into the playground now, and I'll set this, um, I won't do an override, I'll just do a set, which is gonna change our fallback value. I'll do a true here. Um, 
Another piece that I guess I should mention that I sort of overlooked is uh, jumping back into the point itself. You'll see at the very top, these are our facets. These are where we describe uh, the point itself, what the true value actually means, what the false value means. If this was a numeric point, this would be where we set our units, where we set our per per precision, um, all of the individual details about the point itself. So in this case, I'll just say uh, our true text is enable and our false text is disable. And now when I save this, you'll see the out will change from true to enable. And if I refresh, you can see that we're now um, saying that this point means enable when it's actually true. So, uh, so I can show you what the numeric looks like. We'll create a numeric point here and we'll leave it at the default name. And I will jump into it and go to facets. Again, you hit the uh, double arrow there. And here it looks a little bit different. Uh, we're going to do, actually, let's do this. I'm going to set a value here first and we'll say 70.55 just to simulate that this was a temperature, say. In my uh, facets for the units, obviously, I want it to be a temperature. So we'll go down here towards the bottom of the first section for temperature and then we will select Fahrenheit because we're in the United States, and uh, then we'll hit OK. Now, you'll remember that when I set my value, it was uh, 70.55, but I'm only seeing 70.5 here. That is because our, per our precision is set for one. That means the number of digits that we'll see after the decimal. So if I change this to two, Hit save, refresh. Now we have the full 0.55. You can also set this for zero, depending on, say, like if you're doing a humidity or something like that, you could set it for a zero. Save, refresh, and now it will not only get rid of everything after the decimal, but it'll also round it to the nearest digit that uh, is visible on the screen, no matter what that per precision is. So uh, that is, in a nutshell, what you can do in the points themselves, depending on what the point is. Um, I guess one additional piece that we can look at is the enum, because that is a little bit different because of how enums work. So if I open this up and I set my... Uh, my enum value, oh, I can't do it yet because I haven't set any facets. So let's go in here. We're going to set the range. This is where we're setting what each of the uh, um, options are in our enum. So the way that this shows up in the UI is a little bit funky. So uh, I came into my double arrow here to pull up my facets. Then we've got the range. Uh, which is where we're going to set the value. I hit the three dots. Now there's this other window that's going to pop up. You're going to need to hit the double arrow again. And now we can get in here and set our individual values that are accessible through this enum. So for, let's, let's just do as an example, for zero, I'm going to say unoccupied. Uh, for one, I'm going to say occupied. And then uh, we'll just leave it at that. This is essentially just a Boolean because we only have two states, but uh, we're doing it in an enum. This happens sometimes where uh, the point that comes in, say, from a controller or something like that for an occupancy uh, set, set point, uh, or excuse me, occupancy mode, uh, it may come in as an enum and not as a Boolean. So good to know on that front. We'll hit OK. We'll hit OK again. We'll hit OK again. Then we'll hit Save, Refresh, and we don't have any fallback or anything like that. So now if I go into my set, we, will, we won't see the number values for each of these individual states. We will just see the two um, names of the states and we can set them as we need to. So I'll set for occupied and that's what we've got is occupied. The cool thing though is if I create a, another, let's say I create a numeric, oops, create a numeric point and we'll leave it as its default. If I go from the out of my enum to the in of my numeric, what do you think will happen? It's taking that numeric value of the enum and passing it along to the numeric writable point because it knows 
this needs to be a numeric and behind the scenes our enum is really just a numeric point that has some uh, labels attached to it, let's say. And what I did there is the point of a wire sheet um, is to connect individual points together and make logic happen. Uh, this gets really, really powerful when we pull up something like the kit control palette. If you do any control or any programming within Niagara, you're probably going to be spending a bunch of time in the kit control palette because that's where all of our logic blocks are that make a lot of these things happen. So uh, if we open up the logic portion, if you're doing any Boolean logic, everything is basically going to live there. And uh, any math-related things are obviously going to show up underneath the math portion. And uh, I think... Yeah, underneath logic is also where you'll get things like uh, greater than, less than, comparative uh, type objects to pull out and make work as well. Now, a good thing to know for demonstration's sake and for testing, just for playing around, we have a couple different objects that will generate random, pseudo-random values for you so that you can play around with things very easily. And those are underneath the util folder in kit control. So we've got something like a ramp. If I pull that out, you'll see what it's doing is it's just ramping up and then it'll ramp down, it'll ramp up, it'll ramp down so that we can play around with uh, logic and things without having to manually punch in values to make that happen. You can also see that it's very configurable. You can change the period or your amplitude, your offset. Um, so in this case, uh, we are start our zero point essentially on this uh, triangle wave is uh, going to be 50 and we're going to go 50 above and 50 below. So our total uh our total wave will go from 0 to 100, as we're seeing it do here. And we can also change that period so that it's longer. It takes longer to do that. Uh, right now, it's going to take uh, 30 seconds to do the whole thing. Um, so that is very helpful to do. And we can do stuff like just pull the output of that ramp and put it into our numeric writable. And now it looks like we're ramping from 0 degrees to 100 degrees uh, on this numeric point. Then we could uh, go further and go back into our logic, say, and say greater than. And if I just pull these things to the side and go out here into the in here, if our input is, say, greater than 50, and uh, we will see that now. So once our input point comes up above 50, this will go true. And uh, you're doing some basic logic just on the wire sheet. Uh, so be sure to jump into kid control and play around with everything in here. There's a ton of different stuff. There's some basic HVAC programming related objects. So things like um, PID loops, and they call a PID loop a loop point, um, and uh, thermostat type objects. Uh, a lot of stuff in there to play around with. All right, so that's going to do it on the basics of points in Niagara. There's a lot there. I'm sure I missed some things that you're going to want to know about. So if I did, if there are specific things that you've run across as you play around with your points in Niagara, um, leave them down in the comments below and I can circle back and uh, show you about that kind of stuff later on. Um, but get into the wire sheet and play around with these things, especially kit control. Get familiar with kit control. If you're doing any kind of Niagara work, even if you're not really programming equipment using Niagara, you're only using it at a supervisory level, you will be in kit control grabbing things from time to time. And you'll also, of course, no matter what you're doing, you'll be on a wire sheet making things talk to one another. That's sort of the nature of Niagara, and that's the power of Niagara. So thanks as always for watching. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. And we will see you in the next video in this uh, Niagara Basic series. Thanks for watching.